took that of me at the Grand Canyon and I'm literally staring into the sun like an idiot. <laughs> hey man, look, you can make fun of me all you want, but I look hot and I feel like I'm playing Hector, dude. Alright. I didn't say not hot, I just said a guy that was just ever clear. What's that for? Hey, Alright, let's got some jams, bro. <laughs> All right, guys, what's happening? Welcome to a special edition of a Tom Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. My name is Stephen Corka. And we are here with. In one of, uh, yes, I know your name. Uh, one of the one of the hottest writers in comic books today, guys. Mr. Donny Cates, right here, author of Thanos, author of Cosmic Ghost Rider, Baby Teeth, Doctor Strange, God Country. Uh, did I say Guardians of the Galaxy? You just did. I did, yes. Yeah. I just said Guardians of the Galaxy and, and more. And so it is our great pleasure to welcome here to Corker Comics here in Miami. He's here right now to 9 o'clock today. So if you're watching live, you have an opportunity to come here and get your things signed from him tonight till 9 o'clock. Donnie, how are you? I'm good. I didn't notice it was live until you just said that, and now I'm terrified. Are you really terrified? I <laughs> uh, mean, I say some wild shit sometimes. It, it's all right. We are not censored yeah. here. Yeah, absolutely. You like Miami? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Austin right now is freezing, so this is awesome. Yes, uh, and you're a Texas native? Yes, sir. And on your bio that was sent, sent to me, it says that you are from the town that the King of the Hill TV show is based on. Yeah. My judge grew up in my town, which is called Garland, and King of the Hill is Arlen. Um, and it's frighteningly just like that. It's exactly like that. So, Mike Judge, does that make you a Beavis and Butthead fan as well? Hell yeah. You know, and weirdly, you know, because King of the Hill, like the, the character of Hank Hill, kind of started on Beavis. And Butthead, right? Because mm-hmm. their neighbor. And so, if you think about it, they, they are also in Garland, which makes them Texans, which is real weird. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, it, my, my, my high school's notable alumni are uh, Mike Judge, myself, and uh, David Koresh. Oh, my God. <laughs> David Koresh. <laughs> two leaders of cults. Weird, right? Speaking of that, on your yeah. on your Twitter, you have a you have a tweet pinned to the top, uh-huh. and uh, the of your com- of of, of, your, cult, yeah. of your of the what is your cult and how do we join? Um, do you want to be in it? Well, well, what is it? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, well, if you want to yeah. be in it, you're in it. That's it. That's it. It's got to be cool, man. It's all the, the cult is real nice. It's not a it's not a it's not a mean cult. Most cults are mean. Uh, and people end up not, uh, not, okay. I guess all cults start out fun, <laughs> and then the FBI gets involved in stuff. Weird um, so, <laughs> but our cult, as of right now, is super cool. Isn't We're, that what they all say? Um, yeah, but I mean, I'm not And then you're making that, a drink juice, and I'm I'm dead. not claiming to be the Messiah, though, right? I'm not claiming to be, yes. like, like, Christ yet. Um, so, it's really weird. David, my dad always made fun of David Koresh. Uh, because he was like, he says that he's Christ returned, but he's wearing glasses. Yeah. It's like Christ has like weird eyesight. That's weird. Um, anyway, so the cult. Uh, uh, if you're a part of the cult, uh, you're called. An, uh, you're a part of the advocates, right? Um, and so all you have to do is tweet at me and say I want to be in, and you're in. And um, we're making merch right now. My fiance Megan is drawing it up. Um, and we're going to have t-shirts and pins and buttons and hats. And um, if you order any of those things, it comes with a card that um, signifies you as a part of the cult um, that I'll sign as the president of the cult. Um, and we're going to work something out with my, with my manager. Where we'll, we'll do something, like a, like, a, like a special variant that you can only give. It's like a part super of the serious, cult. man. I'm dead serious. Yeah. Dude, I, to quote the poet T.I., uh, everything I do, I do heavily. <laughs> and and so, once this merch is ready to to be a part of the advocates, uh, this is going to be on a on your Twitter. Just check your Twitter for that yeah, information. Just check, just check my Twitter. Um, we'll have it before Emerald City, um, so it'll be available to order. I don't know if you'll get it in time, um, but it'll be in the next two weeks or so that we'll we'll throw the the, the merch up and everything. Yeah, awesome. All right, so let's talk about the books you're writing. Um, 
I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I'm, I've never been a fan of magic, superstition, anything like that. Characters like Ghost Rider, Punisher, Thanos, Doctor Strange. Uh, to me personally, this is my, it's just my personal opinion. Great characters um, going with other main characters. But standalone characters, just not the strongest for me personally. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I'm not even I'm, – I'm not sucking your dick right now because you're here. I'm serious. Like, like you have made these characters interesting in my opinion. Thank you. I, uh, I, I read your Thanos run. I, I – I thought it was amazing. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider did not expect it to be so fun. To be to be perfectly honest, especially from a character like Frank Castle. Yeah. Um, oh. Well, it says something about the about the series Thanos wins uh, about about how dark that series is. That Frank is the comedic relief, like he's the fun part of that. But you know, when you have two Thanoses hanging out, things tend to get a little dour. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, so now. You have Cosmic Ghost Rider. He has a, a series coming out. Cos- um, Ghost Rider destroys the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. Thanos is launching an, another book. Uh, Marvel History. Uh, or is it rewrites Marvel History? Destroys. Is it destroys? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Anyways, uh, so these are not written by you. Um, have have the writers came to you for advice? Have they looked for your endorsement? Are you? Are, well, are, uh, two things. Uh, yo, is Infinity War playing right now? Oh, can we just can we just pause this and watch it anymore? <laughs> run from it. Yeah. So, anyway, um, that's that's okay. Okay. Um, uh, what was the question? Oh yeah, yeah. So I'm actually um, in charge of all of Marvel Cosmic. If it takes place in space, it has to go through me. Wait, uh, anything space? Yeah, 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 yeah. So like all, uh, uh, so all roads lead to Guardians, and everything goes out of Guardians. So, uh, so if Fantastic Four go to fight the Scrolls, you you have to they have to go through you. They have to talk to me about it first. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Cause okay. Because everything cosmic uh, is is my dominion. So you're like the executive producer of I, you know I show ran um, the the Marvel Knights series. I like I cast everybody yep. and 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 wrote the outline for it and everything. And after that series, they end up just giving me that same title for the Marvel Cosmic stuff too. So, like, if there's a Thanos book, uh, I get to cast it and say who's going to write it. And, you know, I don't, I'm not telling them, like, what to write per se. Of there's course not, yeah. things that need to connect to what I'm doing as, like, just, like, jumping off points and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, once a week or so, I have to get on the phone with Darren, my editor, and he reads me out all the things that are coming up in everyone's books that if it gets out into space or if it has to do with, you know, the Nova Corps or... Or the, or the Shi'ar, or whatever. Um, I just have to look at it and make sure that it's not, you know, bumping up against stuff. So to answer your question, um, with Thanos, um, yeah, you know, obviously I have long-term Thanos plans, as you can see in Guardians, um, and I am not done by any stretch um, uh, dealing with, with the Mad Titan. He's on screen right now. I love him so much. Uh, my big- and, and Josh Brolin did a great job too. Oh, yeah, God, so good. Really right? good. Yeah, really you good. Forget that's not a real dude. Uh, that's like a computer character. Isn't that weird? Plus, I'm one of those guys that empathizes with Thanos in you in the movie. Do that. Don't do that. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just saying. No, 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 no. I love Thanos a lot. <laughs> that is space Hitler. <laughs> not be on that dude's side because his whole thing about like like people will argue like, oh, he had a good point. Like he like there's only a finite resources and then, and there's people, so you got to kill all these people to save everybody else. He's a hero. Or, when you wear the gauntlet, you can just make more shit. You can just make more resources. I didn't even think of that. So, like, yeah. there is an element of, like, he's doing it for the right reasons, but he also does just want to kill a bunch of people. Which, you know, cool, but ad- ad- just admit that that's who you're supporting, right? Anyway. W- were you upset that in Infinity War, no mention of death and his love no, for death? not at all. Not at all. Yeah. That would be so... Like they still managed to figure out how to get an image of a of a skull face in a cloak. Mm-hmm. Like they just did it the other, the other way around. No, the death thing would have been weird and out of out of uh, out of sync. Like they hadn't prepped that enough to be that. Um, and those motivations of like of like um, uh, 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 the resources thing that's canonical. Like that 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 comes from uh, uh, one of the one of Jim's books, one of Jim Starlin's books. Um, but yeah, no, but they, I was prepared to answer you with, when you said, were you disappointed in, I was like, no, <laughs> all of it is perfect. There's one thing that they didn't do that is, well, there's two things that they didn't do, which could have made that film from a perfect film to the greatest of the whole time. 
One is when Thor shows up in Wakanda with his new hammer, why doesn't Immigrant Song start playing? Like, that's the move, right? That's yeah. the Thor's about to fuck a bunch of dudes up song, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if they put, like, African war drums on it for, like, Wakanda and stuff, how the hell would that have been, right? Yeah. Um, and the other thing that they should have done is uh, right, and I just I tweeted this out the other day, is right at the end, that last shot of Thanos, right, right before the, the it goes black, uh, he should have turned to dust as well. He should have gotten got by his own thing, which has been would have made it the most tragic story of all time. <laughs> that, that would have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's flawless. It's a flawless film. Um, do you know anything about Endgame? Yeah. I have to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, don't tell us. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell us. Just yeah. want to know if you do. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of movies, let's talk God Country. Sure. Yeah. What's going on? I turned in the script last week. Uh, it's all done. I wrote it. That's not a normal thing, right? They don't let comic writers usually get on the script. Barely, uh, I mean, usually, usually, usually usually yeah. yeah, don't they have Hollywood writers usually adapt the the, the uh, source material for a screenplay? Yeah, I'm not real sure. Who would you cast for Emmett? Um, John Goodman uh, or Denzel. Because uh, you need a guy of a certain age that is viable as a, as a grandfather, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time can be badass, can be scary. Right? And dude, Denzel just would crush that. He could do all the pieces of it, from like the being sick and weak and scary to being a hero and like being soft. You know, Denzel would be my number one pick for it. But, um, but yeah, no, it's good. And it, and yeah, it is fairly rare uh, that uh, the guy who wrote the book gets to do it. And I don't really know why they're letting me do it. Um, that was the studio's call. Yeah, in the yeah. in the meeting where we were, they asked if they could option it and, and, and make the film, I obviously said yes, and they were like, do you want to write it? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, have you ever written any screenplays or TV shows? And I was like, nope. And they are like, eh, you'll figure it out. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I wasn't supposed to do that. Like, I got out of that meeting, and my agent called me. He's like, are you writing it? <laughs> that happen? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Let's get the money. Get the fuck out of here, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's weird. It was fun writing it. I had a lot of fun. Because um, I, you know, with a screenplay, you get to write uh, in 4D, meaning I can use, like, sound and light in a way to, like, tell stories that I, I can't in a comic. Uh, and, like, in a comic... You know, each panel has enough room for me to say a thing, to you to say a thing back, and then for me to respond to that. ABA is generally accepted, unless yep. you're Brian, and you just like A, B, C, D, E, O, G. Um, and in a screenplay, you don't have any of that shit. People can just talk. They don't have to worry about space. Yeah. You know, so it's really freeing and very, and very fun. So my part's done. I turned it in. Um, you know, they're probably going to give it over to someone else who does this all the time to do a polish or a another draft. draft yeah yeah i mean that happens to everybody right so you know uh if if it ends up being horrible it wasn't my fault i <laughs> I, I i think the screenplay i turned in is pretty cool so where is it in production right now and when uh, that's it i mean yeah it's, i mean before anyone's ever even cast or we start you know they start building sword props um that screenplay has got to go back and forth a million times and it'll be rewritten and rewritten and then it goes out to actors uh, and, and, and you know, say Denzel is interested, but he wants a bunch of shit changed. It gets rewritten again and again and again, you know. So we're at the very, very, very baby steps. Any director that you would like to see attached to it? Oh, I did have someone in mind. Who was it? Who was I thinking that would be awesome? Megan! I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I can't wrap my head around that. I don't know. It, it's exciting. I would imagine it's exciting to have one of one of your creations uh, be brought to life on the screen or, or at least be on that path. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, it's, it's my, my heart is comics, you know, and so, like, this isn't a thing that I want to pursue forever, you know. Like, I don't want to stop making comics and start making films, you know. I already told the story once, you know. I did my thing. You know, so it's up to them now. That being said, I really want a Valifax prop. Mm-hmm. I really want a fucking twelve foot enchanted sword hanging above my office. That's really all I care about. I just want to see it. You know, because everyone else just looks like dudes and stuff. You know, everyone just looks like people. You know, I guess there's a like God of War and stuff like that. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's fun. I'm not gonna be excited about anything until there's a camera that is plugged in. Camera's plugged in. I don't know how that works. Yeah. 
Good question. Yeah. So let's talk comics now. Uh, you're obviously a fan. You're not just a writer, but you're a fan. You've been reading all your life? Bro, you see my sweatshirt? I see it. I got a Maximum Carnage sweatshirt on. That's not casual. Um, yes, I've been reading my entire life. My dad taught me how to read on comics. My brother was a big uh, um, uh, baseball card fan. Yeah. And the baseball card shop sold comics, obviously, you know? Yep. It was in the mall, and I went in, um, it's like three years old, and just wanted all of them, these big, shiny things. And my dad was like, I will buy those for you if you will learn how to read them. And so, like, every day, he would sit, sit, sit me down with, like, Spider-Man comics and stuff. And he, so, like, the first language I spoke was comics. And I've never take, taken a break. A lot of people will get into college or high school and stuff and, like, find girls and stuff and, uh, and, and, and lose interest and then come back. I've never taken a break. Has it has it been Marvel, DC, and indie, one and one over the other? What's your, what's your preference? Support, baby. Marvel. Okay. I could die forever okay. until my contract's up and then we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying I'm saying as far as like reading growing up. Yeah, dude, I was always a Marvel kid. For yeah. Sure. I, I really was. Um, I was just a huge Spider-Man kid. I mean, I say all the time that I've been reading Venom. Venom's 30 years old this year. I'm 34. So I was there from the jump. You know, I was, I've been, re- I've read, I've read every single issue of that character ever. Did you like the Clone Saga? Yeah, dude, I, it, 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 I, I just got to check. I got to check. Yeah, dude, it's yeah. dope, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it went on a little bit longer than it needed to, but yeah. like the core concept, man. I remember reading that issue where it's like when it when it flipped on itself and said that like, no, that's not Peter. Like that's Ben. And I was just like, what? <laughs> it's dope, man. I love shit like that. Um, I love comics that just go for it. Like you know, JMS is run on Spider Man. It's one of my favorite runs. And JMS's run is responsible for some of the greatest Spider-Man stuff and some stuff that just kind of didn't work. But he swung for it, every arc. Like, he went for it, man. And, like, you know, you and I were talking about um, Age of Apocalypse earlier. Yeah. And how dope it was, right? Yeah. It, the, the thing is, you go back and read Age of Apocalypse now, there's a lot of it that doesn't hold up just because the the style changes like the from the 90s to now. And for sure, man. But, like, I will always... I will always give credit to a to a to a book for at least trying to do to be loud to like change shit up, you know. Um, so yeah, I've always loved that shit. So obviously, you're a Spider Man fan. Yeah, huge. Obviously, if anyone's new to the room, this man writes Venom. Yeah. Is Spider Man coming to Venom? No, no. <laughs> I just have to. I have to ask. I I got it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I maybe maybe you guys should think about uh, going to your local comic book store on free comic book day and checking out the issue that Ryan and I wrote and drew in that one and maybe ask me again the day after free comic book day. Sounds good. We, we will definitely do that. That's what I'm um, Check the FOCs for that. We'll check the FOCs. Regarding Venom, you saw the movie? Mm, uh-huh. Yes, I did. Should I even ask you if you liked it? Do you need to? Nope, I don't. All right. Uh, all right. Did you like it? Oh, uh, it was. I loved it. it. was better than I thought it was going to be. It. Loved it. Are you being sarcastic about that? No, no. I'm not sure. so, why? You haven't said anything this whole time, so now, well, now, now, now talk. With my questions. Okay. So I'm Do saying, you like my run? Yeah, I love love your run. You like those two things at the same time? Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I, you know what? I had really low expectations. I, uh, I went with my son. And he had a good time, so I had a good time through. I can see that. I, pre- I, see I pretended that. it wasn't Venom. I yeah. just, it was like a type of Venom, and yeah. so I, w- I was cool with it. Tom Hardy, I've said this a million times, so excuse me if you've heard this. this that accent was before. atrocious. Uh, well, Tom Hardy's doing a Brooklyn accent. Eddie Brock's from San Francisco, uh, and the film takes place in San Francisco, so I'm not real sure what that was about. But Eddie, uh, not Eddie, uh, Tom Hardy said that he based his, his performance off of um, well, Buddy Allen, and Conor McGregor, which is exactly what he's doing. He's nailing that. But I kind of thought it would be, it would have been cool if he had based his character off of the character Eddie Brock from the Venom books. Uh, but I'm not an actor, you know. So I, I don't know. That seems like a cool idea to me. Um, no, it was just real goofy. And here's the thing: I have to. I, if people enjoyed it. That's awesome, and I, I hope that uh, it brought a lot of enjoyment to a lot of people, and that's dope. Cool. Weirdly enough, as the person who spends the most time with that character, probably on Earth, uh, I'm weirdly not the demo for it, mm-hmm. you yep. know, because I live with that guy every day, you know, and so that's just, 
that wasn't him. You know, right. um, the Cletus Cassidy thing at the end, uh, I like. So goofy. Um, well, the dialogue in that's that what you liked. <laughs> the Woody Harrelson. Uh, yeah, I did. I liked it. I can't wait to see two. Um, like, uh, I can't wait to see Tom Hardy fight a seventy-five-year-old Woody Harrelson uh, in mocap. Dope. In a, in a Ronald McDonald wig. Uh, it's gonna be dope. Uh, the thing is, all the dialogue in that is actually taken from um, uh, Carnage Mind Bomb, uh, which was written by w- 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 Baron Ellis, uh, with art by Kyle Hotz. And so, like, that dialogue that he's saying there is actually, like, one of the most, like, canonically, like, true things. Um, and, you know, here's what I will say that's good about that film, is that if the first film kind of loosely was adapted on Legal Protector and Planet of the Symbiotes, um, the second one is very clearly going to be Maximum Carnage, right? Yes. Uh, if you do all that, you've kind of run out of Venom stories to tell. So number three, it's got to be mine. It's got to be yeah. Null and stuff, right? Like, yeah. What else is it going to be? For yeah. three, you've got to bring in dragons. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, you had a question? You, you oh, said, yes. Uh, better Pantera album, Far Beyond Driven or Vulgar Display of Power. Vulgar Display. Yeah. Yeah, that's you want to tell the audience why you even asked that question? Huh? He compared his writing to no, I, I didn't compare my. Someone said, <laughs> someone said, if you're writing, someone asked me on Twitter during one of my AMAs if your writing style had right. a soundtrack, what would it be? And I said, fucking Pantera. Yeah, but those are two very different. All their albums are really different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So but domination. That's that's my favorite Pantera song. Yeah. It just crushes. Yeah, L- listen to Domination by Pantera. It's so you have cool. a band. I do have a band. I'm in a band uh, with my fiance Megan. I'm sorry, that's my fault. I told him. No, no that's fine. <laughs> There's nothing you can hear yet. I haven't yeah. recorded anything yet. Uh, but I play drums and I do screamy things. And she plays keys and sings beautifully. And uh, she's a real, um, like, synthy, gothy kind of a chick and, like, the stuff that she's into. And obviously, I'm a Pantera, like, just, like, speed freak. Uh, it's so it's those two things together. Uh, it's it's like real like if Depeche Mode had a double bass kick to it, shit like that. Um, so I don't know. It's real weird. It's you real guys are, weird. are you guys are working on a comic together, the Image? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, Anything that you can say about it yet? It's called Flood. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you the title of it. It's called Flood. Yeah, but that's about it. Yeah, it's the most depressing book of all time. It's. It's it's a death of humans was pretty depressing. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> the dog. I did, I did kill the dog. Kill the do dog. That. I do that. Yeah, you kill a lot of dogs. John Wick style. Yeah. <laughs> um, are, are there any questions from the audience while we're here? Don't be shy. Be shy. Um, who was like your inspiration to become like a writer? Was there something like was it like a defining moment for you? Like was there a specific writer that really kind of all right, and for the for the audience uh, on online, the question is, who's an inspirational writer to to Donnie? Yeah, yeah. Um, there wasn't really like one writer that I um, like. Jason Aaron's my favorite writer on the planet. He's just unreal. And you guys are friends. We are. We're yes. Now. And that's, His Thanos was awesome. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah that yeah Thanos uh, Thanos right. Right. yeah phenomenal. Um, uh, as far as like the guy, like, so um, there is a writer that uh, kind of inspired me to do it all. His name is Mark Meese, and none of you have ever heard of him because he was my professor at SCAD. Uh, who uh, I went to SCAD. I was a retailer for a long time, and then they all shut down, and um, and I didn't really know what I was going to do. But I can draw a little bit, and I can sculpt, and so I went to school uh, at SCAD in Savannah to become a penciler, and I ended up being in classes with Trad Moore and Jeff Shaw. Uh, and so I quickly abandoned that idea and just hired them instead. Um, but you have to take uh, a mandatory writing class. Uh, and I had never written a word before 2009. And um, my, my writing professor, Mark Neese, took me aside after class uh, uh, and, and was like, you, you could be good at this if you tried. And I, I think that you have what it takes. And so he taught me everything. So, and, and, and so I tried. And I someday I'll be good at it. You know? What what advice do you give to people out there that want to get into the business? Don't. <laughs> don't. Don't do that. I don't want to compete with you. <laughs> yeah, it's my job. Um, 
for writing or illustration, either or. Um, or edit or whatever, just in the comic business. Yeah. I will say this. The only people I have ever seen not make it are the people who quit. Uh, every single person that I have seen who just doesn't give up eventually makes it. Um, or dies of old age. Or dies of old age. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I tend to think of comics as, 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 as far as the, like the breadth of entertainment jobs uh, is by far the easiest to break into. Now, breaking in and staying in, or breaking in or breaking out, are two different things. Breaking in is the easiest thing you'll ever do. Uh, if you make a comic with your buddy, guess what? You're in. There's no test. Like, you make comics now. Now, breaking out, trying to get people to care about what you're doing, that takes a long time. You know, um, I was very lucky in that I, mine took, it was, you know, people think God Country was like my first thing I ever did, and I like was like a quote-unquote overnight success. Well, like, well, my overnight was four years leading up to that, you know, and everyone else is the same way, you know. But I just, I just didn't have any quit inside me, you know. I was just like, I'm either going to uh, be well-known for making really dope comics or I'm going to be well-known for being the guy who won't stop making those fucking awful comics. You know, but either which way, I was going to keep on doing it. And the only people who who don't are people who just bail. You know, so just do it and, and don't stop doing it. That's pretty much it. You know. And so you worked four years hard. Who gave you the chance? Like, how how did you get it? How- one. I don't know, there's a lot of people along the way that were very cool and very helpful. You know, um, but like. It's not a thing that can be given, you know. Like I can't, I can't make any of you guys work for Marvel, right? Like you have to do it, you know. Like you have to go and make your own comics and get it out there, and you have to call stores and you have to print it up and go to shows and put it in people's hands. You know, it's you. You know, um, there's obviously a t- I had a ton of help in the way of people uh, like giving me advice and like talking about like how to do things I would go to people and be like I want to do an image book like how do I do that people were very helpful with that but like no one can make me sit at a computer and write you know it's yeah. up to me you know um, and it's up to all you guys too you know yeah. anyone have any other questions they'd like to ask before we get to the signing is there anybody on the live stream yeah. I'm, but we can't read the live stream here Robert they ask questions all the time don't worry okay. about them yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, I've read Animal Man yeah. by Graham Morrison's son. Hell yeah. Of course I have. I just bought the omnibus because uh, Megan actually hasn't read it. And um, uh, we're, we're thinking about doing a, a podcast, actually, uh, Megan and I, because we don't have enough jobs, um, where uh, every week we assign each other a book. Because she's an indie kid, and obviously I'm a big two dude. And so she assigns me a indie book, and I assign her a big two book. And then we go and, and talk about it. And, and like break it down as a writer and as an artist and like break it down so Animal Man is going to be one of my first for her yeah that's awesome um so War of the Realms is getting ready to happen mm-hmm. you're taking a break from Venom it's a break guys it's a break I'm coming right back it's a break right back. yeah I'm taking we're taking that break because there's a big 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 huge thing coming in Venom later this year that Ryan and I had to go and get ahead on which Marvel did a teaser last week right yes Yes. Everyone is a target. Is that is that is that the well? You can't tell us the title, can you? That's fine. No worries. No, yes, yes. But everyone is a target, guys. Everyone is a target. That, that's this summer, right? Uh, I don't know. Well, it's this year. It's this year. This year. After War of the Realms. Yeah, for sure. You figure it out. All right. I will say that I am. I am. I am. I am. I'm very uh, known uh, that I I tend to foreshadow what I'm working on next by the clothing I wear. So take from that uh, whatever you will. Fair enough. And what what do you, you know? Obviously, we talked about how you're in the comics. What are you reading right now? If you have the time, of course. Man, what am I reading? Chip's new Daredevil book is dope. It's really good. Um, I remember I remember being in the retreat when Chip um, told us the whole thing, and I turned to Matthew and I was like, "He's gonna win a fucking Eisner for that. Like, that <laughs> is unreal." Um, everything Jason Aaron writes, I read, um, and it makes me upset. Every time I do it, um, I have to like not read his shit 
before I start writing for the day. I have to do it at the end because I, I momentarily quit my job every time I read anything that he writes. Uh, so I'll just never be that good. It's irritating. He just casually says shit. Ugh. He just casually says shit in the room. He's, he's a very quiet guy, but if Jason starts talking, everyone just shuts down because Jason's about to just spit some fire. Um, <laughs> like, a good example is his brain just works so brilliantly and just different than everyone else. Uh, we were at a retreat one time and I was talking about Venom and I was talking about, um, I was like, yeah, in the first arc, there's this character named Rex Strickland and, uh, he was actually, he wore, um, a symbiote in the Vietnam War and Jason goes, Venom. And I was like, what the, what, what, what did you just say? <laughs> Did you just say Venam? And that's why that book exists. Because, like, CD was like, we're going to publish that. We're going to publish Venam. And I was like, fuck it, I got you. Yeah. Uh, he just does shit like that. It's just like, quit. And actually, in Death of the Inhumans, when I pitched Death of the Inhumans, uh, Jason emailed me later that day and was like, I really like that pitch. And I, on the plane ride home, I thought of a scene. Um, and, like, I don't want to write your book for you, but here's that scene. And he just wrote it. And it's the scene where Black Bolt uh, is in prison and just starts talking, and they're just like beating him and beating him, and he just won't stop talking, and like their heads started to explode and shit, and he walks out of it. That's Jason. Jason just gave me that scene. He was like, I think that'd be dope, and I was like, I'm not going to argue with you about things that are dope, Jason Aaron. You know. Um, what else do I like? I like Grant's GL. Um, it's crazy. It is. Um, there's a bunch of different versions of Grant. You know, there's superhero, there's like all star Superman Grant, mm -hmm. but then there's also like Doom Patrol Grant or the Filth Grant, where he just he's just you know off the deep end. Um, I'm so happy that we're getting off the deep end on GL. It's like there, there's a, there's a, there's a, if you're not reading it, all you need to know about it is that there's a member of the core who just has a volcano for a head, <laughs> and just as he talks, he like rumbles and stuff. He's just like, well, how? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it's a volcano, like shooting lava everywhere. So good. Um, Tom King's everything. It's great. Um, I'm looking forward to how many Eisners I'm going to watch him win this year for Mr. Miracle and how jealous and shitty I'm going to feel about it. Um, what else? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of read. I, I read everything because I, I get all the books for free now. So like, I, I I tend to just bury myself in it. You know. Yeah, for sure. Um, did you have anything else? No, the Anyone from the audience? If you had your choice uh, from any publisher, any hero, any villain, there you go. Who would you want to tackle? Perfect. The question, ladies, was 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 if he could pick any pers a character to tackle, who would it be? Donnie here said Batman. And I have I have one other dream character that I've always wanted to write. Um, but I cannot tell you who it is because I just got the job and I'm uh, starting writing it this summer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Exciting stuff, guys. All right. Well, uh, any other questions, guys? Last chance until you come see him personally. All right, guys. So Donnie Cates is here right here. Corker Comics in Miami on 107th and 8th Street. He's here to 9 o'clock tonight. So make sure you guys get over here if you want to see him, meet him, talk to him, get your stuff signed. Uh, for a very special episode of Tom Pop Feature and Fat Man and Little Boy, I'm Stephen Corker. One. And this is Donnie Cates, guys. Yay. Thank you. <laughs>